This is live from the Louisville locker room where head coach Howard Schnellenberger is getting ready to speak to his team. All be together, 60 minutes, 30 the first half, 30 the second half. Everybody set? We go from Louisville to Tennessee where the volunteers are ready to take the field. It's our pleasure to have Dr. Jerry Punch working with us tonight, and he's standing by with head coach Johnny Majors. Thank you very much, Mike. The defending SEC and Sugar Bowl champion Tennessee Volunteers returned 10 starters on defense, coach, but the offense awfully, awfully young. A lot of young men, a lot of inexperience up front. After a record-setting year last year with record yards gained and points scored, what does it look like tonight offensively? Very young, very green. As I told our young people before we left the locker room, a lot of young ones here, and I said, you just hang tough and do the little things. And we've got a lot of people that have been around you, played hard and played well before, so don't lose your confidence if something happens wrong. And forget about it. Come back the next time, because it's showtime, and I hope we do well. Coach, Louisville's played a game, but you haven't. Does it make any difference? Is there an advantage for one team or the other, having played or not? Well, yeah, a little late to be concerned about that right now, but it's good to have a game underneath you. We're really ready to play our first one, I hope. Coach Johnny Major, thank you very much, Coach. The volunteer faithful feel that they're the three field, have a shot at a national title. It will be a major's accomplishment. Right? All right, thank you, Jerry. And here come the volunteers, 9-2-2 two and two a year ago, an SEC and a Sugar Bowl championship. Johnny Majors enters his 15th season, 102 wins and back-to-back -back conference titles. The Cardinals of Louisville coming off a 10-1-1 season with a Fiesta Bowl win. Howard Schnellenberger beginning the seventh year of his master plan for the program, which is a national championship. Last week's victory got his rebuilding record to 500. ESPN's Thursday Night CFA, Tennessee versus Louisville, is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. Because it's your money, call 1-800-4-CARS or your travel consultant. Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, an overflow crowd, the largest in the school history to see Louisville take on a national power, 11th-ranked Tennessee. This is Mike Patrick, and it's my pleasure to have the chance to work with Mike Gottfried again. And, Mike, the first thing we will see tonight, tremendous emotion generated by this crowd. Mike, the emotion is definitely on Louisville's side. The edge for Tennessee is experience. What Louisville has to do is keep this crowd in the game, stay close, and get to the fourth quarter with a chance to win this football game. As I look at this game, the one unit that has the best chance to dominate is the Tennessee defense. They have 10 starters return. They're big, strong, and they'll put a rush on quarterback Jeff Brown. Jeff Brown had his problems with the rush and stand in the pocket in the first ball game. He needs to sit in that pocket, make his reads, and pull the trigger. His offensive line really has a chore in front of him. They must give him time to throw the football. All right, Mike, and we are very fortunate tonight with a perfect night for weather. Yesterday here in Louisville, it poured all day long. 78 degrees, only a 10% chance of rain tonight. And a perfect night for football in Louisville. They have waited for this for a long, long time. The Cardinals will get the football to start this game. And, Mike, I think the emotion, the adrenaline can't flow forever. I think you have to take advantage of it early. You really do. And as I said, they need some good things Louisville does to start the ball game off. They need to get their confidence. They're a young football team. Tennessee's been in this kind of atmosphere before. Louisville had a big win in the Fiesta Bowl. It would just help them in this situation tonight. Well, Louisville's kicking team comes on. Apparently, they have deferred their choice to the second half. No, right to begin with, Tennessee will kick off. Joey Chapman tees it up at the 35-yard line. And Daryl Boykin, number three, is the deep man. 
A crowd of over 40,000 on its feet here at Cardinal Stadium. Boykin at the four. Gets it out across the 20-yard line. Jeff Brom is Louisville's quarterback. He was Mr. Football for the decade of the 80s in Kentucky, but only threw for 84 yards in his first start last week. Fullback Ralph Dawkins was the Cardinals' leading rusher a year ago, and last week he had 162 yards. Only two starters are back on the offensive line. Kevin Blumeyer, a former walk-on, was last season's offensive lineman of the year. Boykin and Dawkins in the eye. Dawkins on the pitch. Cut it back. Crosses the 25 to about the 26. The Tennessee defense has all seniors up front, right? And Chuck Smith is an excellent pass rusher. Four and a half sacks last year. All senior linebackers, and Ernest Fields was far and away the team's leading tackler. A whopping 140 a season ago. In the secondary free safety, Dale Carter is one of the best in the country. He made all SEC in his first year out of junior college. Second and six, Louisville. Boykin on the draw. Got a nice block and cross the 35 to about the 37-yard line. It's a first down, Cardinal. Mike, an excellent play call for Louisville. If you'll notice, it looks like early, when you play against a 4-3 defensive team, they play two tackles, and they play one on the inside of the guard. It looks like Louisville will go to him to make their calls at the line of scrimmage. What they have to do is get Jeff Brom off to a good start, maybe with a screen or roll him out and give him a chance to get something good happening early. Boykin straight ahead. Slips a tackle. Tried to cut it outside, goes back up inside, hit by Shazan Bradley and Kyle Heron. Bradley, number 40, a world of potential, but has not really realized that potential. And here is Boykin, only gained 40 yards last week. Former defensive back out of your old school, out of Kansas. He was the defensive newcomer of the year. Didn't like defense and transfer. One to be on that side where he could carry the football. Second and four, Cardinals opening drive of the game. Dawkins, nice opening across midfield into Tennessee territory. Are they pumped or what? Like they needed the success early. They ran a trap. And when you, as I said earlier, what Jeff Brown will do, you see him here running the trap, is that he's able to dictate where he wants to go depending on where the two defensive tackles for Tennessee's lining up. The only play you actually want to go to the tackle who's a little wider is the trap, which he just ran. Second first down of the drive for Louisville. They're at the Tennessee 49. Shift out of the eye. Dawkins. The second time they've diagnosed that toss sweep very well. And Shazan Bradley, Bradley out of Athens, Tennessee, is right there. Tennessee defense is a defense with a lot of experience. They've been in these situations, although it's an opening game for them this year. What's happening to Tennessee right now is Louisville is flexing out their tight end, which means they're moving him out about five yards more than he usually lines up. Tennessee has to remove a linebacker. That leaves only six people in that box to defend the run. I'd look for Louisville to try to run some kind of screen or rollout here with Jeff Brown. Brown looking for the screen, but he's sacked. Chuck Smith, who had four and a half a year ago, and it looked like Tennessee's had the sack, or had the uh, screen diagnosed, too. He had no place to throw it. You see Jeff Brown setting up the screen. Chuck Smith just beats the block of the left tackle. 
good power, and that's not good news for Louisville. If they can get to the quarterback with a four-man rush and not have to give some linebackers away in a blitz, they could dominate the passing game. Looked like Dawkins may have been very late in getting out there for it, too. It's a loss of 14, so third and 25. Draw play, Boykin. It's a safe call oh, by Howard Schnellenberger. Did not want the early turnover. Gets it out to the 44-yard line. Now they've got a punt. They really do. I was out when Louisville practiced the other morning at 6.30 in the morning. They wanted to use the lights. They practiced. The lights here are very low. The punt returner may have a problem. Now, it's still light. It's still not as dark, and he may be able to pick it up. But the punt returners were having a problem because the ball was above the lights, and they couldn't see it come down. Dale Carter is back to take the punt. He is a brilliant return man but this time is going to have to signal fair catch and makes it just inside the 30-yard line. Punt of 27 yards, but no return. Andy Kelly leads the Vols offense. He started for 18 games. He's lost only two and set a single-season record for yards a year ago. Kelly has only one veteran receiver to throw to, but he's a great one. All-American Carl Pickens, who averaged better than 17 yards a catch last year. Only two starters return on the line. Left guard Tom Myslinski, a preseason all-conference choice. And the crowd noise Get away, Carl. Keep him going. may have been the reason for the stoppage of play. There were still seven seconds to go on the uh, play clock. But they'll call him for the delay. They're having a hard time hearing the signals. Oh, first ball jump. game. First ball game, Mike. I said it last week in the Pitt West Virginia game. Basketball gets to start with Mexico, Cuba football. When you start out, you have to start off with a live opponent. And they are in the loud end of the field that is enclosed here at Cardinal Stadium. Kelly wants to throw on first down. Got it out to Pickens, but he is wrapped up by Robert Canoodle. Canoodle right on top of Pickens. Louisville's whole defensive philosophy is to roll up. Here you see the corner roll up, so when Pickens does make the catch, there's a corner on him. They want to take away the quick game. Now, what that happens, what Tennessee has to do is throw the intermediate routes maybe 15, 18 yards down the field. Actually, a loss of a yard on the completion chart, second and 16. Kelly over the middle and off the fingertips of the intended receiver, Craig Faulkner. Couldn't hold it. Defensively up front for Louisville, Mel Mills had three sacks in the opener last week. The senior from Detroit had only four all of last year. Ben Sumter is the Cardinals' best linebacker. He weighs only 208, but's an outstanding athlete. The secondary is the strength of the defense. Free safety Ray Buchanan was last year's defensive MVP in the Fiesta Bowl. Third and 16 for Tennessee. And Brian Hayes, the left defensive end, said this was the key series for the Louisville defense for the entire game. Bombs away intended for Pickens. He's got it. Touchdown, Tennessee. The most dangerous man on this ball club, the guy you could not let beat you, just did for 75 yards. Third and 15, you got young backs. You might as well hang it out and throw the bomb. Here's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and Carl Pickens shows you why he's one of the great receivers in the country. Makes the catch, gets Tennessee on the board quick. Kevin Wendelbow, the barefoot kicker, on for the point after, and he's got it. There's a timeout early first quarter, and Tennessee has taken a 7 0 lead. ESPN's Thursday night CFA, Tennessee and Louisville is brought to you by Isuzu. For feature styling and price, there's no comparison. And by Pioneer, when you put a six disc CD system in your car, you get a whole lot more out of your music. A 75-yard touchdown bomb to Pickens has quieted the Cardinal crowd as Tennessee jumps on top 7-0. 
Joey Chapman to kick off. Boykin waits inside the five. But it'll take more than one touchdown to quiet this crowd. Boykin from just outside the goal line. This time, shot stopped shy of the 20. Let's go to the sideline and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys on the on the Louisville sideline, defensive coordinator Ty Smith, very pleased with the first rough couple of plays his defense play, but obviously not very pleased with that missed assignment. A free safety did not get over and read the coverage correctly, and that allowed the Tennessee touchdown. But he's talked to him, and he got, I know I blew it, coach, and I won't do it again. Back up there. I think all you have to do right now, Jerry, is say, where is 15? And let's put two guys on him, maybe three. Because he can break it. Brom has to start from his own 17-yard line. Boykin and Dawkins to back. Boykin runs into his own man and then stumbles. Got maybe a yard. If you can call it a scoring drive, it only went 69 yards. They lost a yard on a pass play. We're penalized five yards, but Pickens got it all back in a hurry from Kelly. 75 yards. Tennessee much bigger than Louisville physically. And that may be a factor as the game wears on. Brown chased out of the pocket and drilled inside the 10. And as J.J. Serlis out of Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, came to Tennessee with a bright future. His bad knees have hampered his career. Jeff Brown, it's a play action fake. He's going to really roll out, but Tennessee took it away. There's no place for him to roll out. Tennessee defensive line just beat the offensive line of Louisville. Now that gives Larry Lacewell, the defensive coordinator, two options. One, if his front four can handle that offensive line, he doesn't need to blitz. But now being ahead seven to nothing to have back up, he may send some linebackers after Jeff Brown. Third and 18. The situation Louisville wanted to avoid. Brown straight back, has time. Rifles almost intercepted. Right through the hands of Floyd Miley. It would have been another seven on the board. Well, you don't want a mistake down there. You've got a great punter who gets good height. Now here we're dangerous now. Tennessee may go for the block here with a 10-man rush. Boss Wilsmeyer takes a little long to get the punt away. This is the area where you want to go after it. His first punt was 27 yards, but he did his job getting it deep in the Tennessee territory. Carter is waiting at the 50. Carter only averaged 18 yards in return last year, and a flag will stop this play. They timed Wilmsmeyer. They like to get kicks away at 1.8. They said Wilmsmeyer in practice was around 2-2. Two -two. That's very slow. I have a dead ball. Procedure foul. Get it converted to a low ball. So it backs him up five more yards. Wilmsmeyer from Mississauga, Ontario. Was in the top ten in the NCAA a year ago. Averaged nearly 43 yards a kick. And Howard Schnellenberger, the perspiration coming out early. Biggest home game he has had for this program. And Tennessee has ten men on the line of scrimmage. Wilmsmeyer gets it out of there. Nice, high, sailing kick. Loose ball. Louisville has it. Dale Carter dropped it, and then he was shellacked. Big break for Louisville because it gives them field position. Dale Carter didn't practice this week. He had an injury, did not practice. He's going to have trouble with these lights. He just didn't find the ball. Great hit by Louisville. Wide awake, recover the football. A big break for a young Louisville team that they need right now. Lights are a problem, Mike. They certainly are. Tennessee would have had the ball deep in Louisville territory as it is. The Cardinals get it back on their own 37. Over the middle and complete. Up near midfield, Jose Gonzalez, the tight end. And not your prototype tight end either, 209 pounds. Both 
their tight ends are former receivers that they beefed up a little bit and moved in there. They're not going to do a lot of blocking for you, but they're very effective in the passing game. What Louisville has to do is throw on first down. They have to keep this big Tennessee defense off balance. You've got to try to outguess them. If they think they're going to run pass, they think they're going to pass run. Boy, they are big, too, and they have 10 starters back from last year's unit. Draw, Boykin. Stumbled again, got back to midfield, picked up maybe a half yard. John Majors very upset, you can believe, about that fumble because last year Tennessee was number two in turnover ratio in the NCAA. Johnny believes in that kicking game. He's preached it every place he's coached. Feels you can win a ball game with this kicking game. Uh, he was one of the finest punt return men I ever saw when he played at Tennessee, an All-American. Second and ten, Cardinal. Brown back to throw. He can run. Picked up a couple and got out of bounds. Good job by Brom in the middle linebacker. Sean Walker was chasing him. That time, Mike, it looked like he stayed in the pocket as long as he could and then scrambled. There are times when you have to scramble. Watch a Tennessee defensive front. They're getting too far up the field. They're in his face, and they're cutting down the throwing lanes. Now, here's where a quarterback, you like to have him scramble. He makes something good happen. What Howard wants him to do when he has protection, stay in there. And this pass rush is without Chris Mims. The star left defensive end who was suspended for disciplinary reasons for this game. Third and six, Louisville. Brom once again under pressure and sacked from behind. He really never had a chance. Chuck Smith gets his second sack of the ball game. And the third sack for Tennessee. Chuck Smith, left of your screen, comes by and beats the offensive tackle. Blumeyer, look, right there and makes the tackle. Jeff Brown was starting to step up where he needed to try to get the throw off. This isn't good news for Howard Snellenberger and the offensive staff because they can't hold out the front right now. But they're going to screen, draw, trap, keep them off balance. Wilmsmeyer will punt to Carter, who would like to redeem himself. Standing back at the 15. Wilmsmeyer very high but short, and Carter signals fair catch. He'll make it this time at the 25-yard line. So Louisville hanging on the edge, but they are down only 7-0 here in the first quarter to 11th-ranked Tennessee. 6.09 to go first period of play. Mike Patrick and Mike Godfrey along with Dr. Jerry Punch with you from Louisville, Kentucky. Tennessee has the ball for the second time in the game. The first time, a 75-yard touchdown bomb from Andy Kelly to Carl Pickham. Rock Paul, the fullback. Gets about three, and we talked about size, Mike. Louisville again undersized on defense. They really are. Ty Smith, the defensive quarter, need, needs to and will do this. He'll move the defensive front, front around and try to get Tennessee guessing. As long as he can stop the Tennessee run, he can pressure the secondary so that he can try to stop the passing game, but he cannot allow them to get a running game going. And Johnny Majors likes balance. Kelly is back to throw. Completes to his tight end, Mark Adams. And Adams has the first down. out across the 35 to about the 37. Ben Sumter, the linebacker on the right side, made the stop. Louisville had a short week of practice. They played Saturday night. Here they are playing again on Thursday night. In practice, you don't see the kind of speed Carl Pickens has. So right now, the defensive bats are in a little bit of shock and the linebackers. So that's why other people will now start to come open. You only see that at the Olympic trials. Poe and Henson, the backs on first and ten, Tennessee. Rock Poe, the fullback, banging his way across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Brought down by Brian Hayes, the left defensive end who had to chase the play down. Tennessee lost both fullbacks from last year and both tailbacks. Here you see the start of the option. When you, when you, if you can get the running game going with a fullback on the option, that'll open the quarterback in the pitch. Rock Cole with the, just a good run there for good yardage and puts him in a second and two situation. Second and two. And Henson wrapped up short of the first down. Gain maybe one. That time, stopped by Brevin Smith. Next Thursday night, do we have a great-looking game for you. Dream matchup number 11. Houston brings the run and shoot. 
and all those points to the Orange Bowl to take on the third-ranked Hurricanes of Miami. And Miami has the nation's longest home winning streak, 36 games. Klingler, of course, last week, nine touchdown passes, six of them in the second quarter. People better get a lot of popcorn and a lot of soft drinks for that game. It'll be a while. Third and a yard, Tennessee. Henson. Second effort may have gotten him the first down. Finally stacked up by Chris Collins, number 87, out of Louisville, but they couldn't hold him short of the sticks, it appears. Short yardage. Watch the defensive line pinch. They get good surge, and they really stop the offensive line. Just a great second effort to get the first down. Spotted at the Tennessee 49-yard line. Next short yardage situation you see like that, I wouldn't be surprised if a play action passed the way Louisville played that. Brevin Smith is starting for the first time. There was an injury. Gave him the opportunity to start tonight's ball game. Aaron Hayden, number 24, in a tailback for the first time for Tennessee. Crossing the Louisville territory for the first time. I don't think, Mike, that I have ever seen a team that lost its top six running backs and eight of its nine top receivers in one year. That's incredible. Well, with the new scholarship limitations, and you look at Tennessee, Rock Poles, a six-foot, 220 freshman, and then they have... Tavio Henson is a junior, but then they have two freshman running backs that are going to play a lot in a program like Tennessee, so you can see the youth that they have on their squad. Kelly has plenty of time, throws behind his intended receiver at the Louisville 35-yard line, trying to hit Craig Faulkner. Kelly last year set a single-season yardage record, 14-2-2 two two since he's become a starter. Does not have a great arm. He knows where to go with the football. He's well-schooled. What he has to watch out for is always the inclination to go to Carl Pickens. If I was a quarterback, I'd try to find where's Carl. Me too. And he did once already for 75 yards. Tavio Henson, single setback on third and seven. Kelly floats it down the sideline. His receiver fell down, and the ball was thrown out of bounds. He tried to get it to Pickens, and it was almost intercepted by Ray Buchanan, who was the MVP in the Fiesta Bowl a year ago on defense. I think they confused Kelly. Watch him. They're going to show blitz. Now, Ty Smith, sometimes you show blitz and blitz. Sometimes you show blitz, and you back out, just like they're doing right now. And then sometimes you show a regular defense and blitz. But they definitely confused Andy Kelly. And you can see four people around Mr. Pickens. Punting game is up in the air, as, the, as well as the kicking game. Buchanan is back. And that ball will be killed at the one foot line. Great special teams coverage. And Tom Hutton, the left footer, kicks it 47 yards to within one foot of the goal. This could be the classiest college football game we've ever been to. This is the Louisville Symphony Orchestra performing during the pregame ceremonies. Howard Schnellenberger has come up with many innovative things here at Louisville, but the one thing he has done is bring them big-time football, something that most people thought he could never accomplish. The one thing he needs to innovate right now is a drive. He's got to get them out of this end zone. Now, this is the area where they'd like to go to their tight end. Jeff Brown is going to put it up, wants to throw it down the field. Cardinals only have 22 yards in total offense so far. Start from their own one. Dawkins, quick handoff. A little breathing room gets out to about the three. Daryl Hardy, number 87, in on the tackle. 6'3", 220, a senior from Cincinnati, Ohio. Tennessee's defense is built on letting their linebackers run free. Last year, Ernest Fields led the defense with 140 tackles. Daryl Hardy, the other linebacker, was second with 95, and Sean Walker was third with 82. So their linebackers are active in their defense. Second and seven. Two minutes, three seconds to go, first quarter. The frenzy of the crowd has died, but they're still making some noise. Dawkins tries to turn the corner. Stayed on his feet outside the seven-yard line. 
Dawkins gained 162 yards last week on 27 carries. Jeff Brom, as I said earlier, will check off, but here I think he made a mistake and checked off to the power of the, Louis, the Tennessee defense. Plus, Tennessee was on a slant. They slanted all their defensive linemen to the formation. They'll do that. Sometimes when Louisville goes to a formation where they put the half back to one side, that's where the slant will go, which will open the waggle eventually. Third and four for Brom, whose father played quarterback in Louisville from 1966 to 69. Boykin will try to get the first down and may have it as he crosses the 10. That would be a big, big play if they can keep the football. Well, as I said earlier, they need to keep the crowd in the game. They need to stay close. They're behind 7-0, but it's not time to panic. They made one mistake. Let Carl Pickens out of the out of the open and let him run, but they're playing well. They're settled down. Howard Snellenberg is a veteran coach. He's been here before. A letting Pickens loose a mistake a lot of people have made over the years. It is a first down Louisville. They spot the ball at the 12. Boykin goes to a win. Dawkins will get the carry on a delay. He's wrapped up, picked up just about a yard on the field. Brought him down. Let's get down to the field and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you, Mike. I'm with Lawrence Layton Smith, the orchestra director for the Louisville Orchestra. And how did this come about, having an orchestra perform at a football game, Larry? It's a long story. Uh, Coach Snellenberger and I are reasonably good friends, and he happened to have shown up at a concert where he actually conducted a piece. And so I thought, well, we'll return in kind. We'll, we'll go and we'll, we'll play with it. And he was very successful as a conductor of the orchestra. We'll come, we'll come back in just a moment. All right, Jerry. Second and nine. Brom with a shorter drop this time and throws complete to Jones at the 19-yard line. Let's go back to Jerry Punch and finish up the story on the symphony. Jerry? Now, Larry, he came down and conducted your orchestra. Now, did you reciprocate and give him a play to run the oh, night? Of course I did. I can't tell you which play, though, but it's it might win the game. But I it might win the game. Ah, the, the Louisville Orchestra will celebrate uh, their anniversary here, and it'll also uh, be on at halftime, guys. All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Completion carries the ball out to the 19-yard line, and it's third and three for the Cardinals. I think they're going to let the quarter run out. The more that ticks off that clock, the better for Louisville. The closer you get to the end of the game, being in contention at the end of a period. Tennessee, seven. Louisville, nothing. Telecast of our Thursday night CFA football package coming to you live from Louisville, Tennessee. Oh, no, Lou, I did it again. Louisville, Kentucky, where Tennessee and Louisville are facing each other. Third and three for the Cardinals. And motion on the offensive line as Billy Bosworth just had a seat. Well, the problem is Billy Bosworth has moved his position now. He's He is filling in and has moved to left tackle because Kevin Blumeyer is out. So it's a new position for him. The wide receiver ran. Again, uh, started too early. The crowd noise has affected we Louisville also. Get ball. Take your foul. You right your Louisville. We will check on Blumeyer. Uh, Dr. Jerry Punch is going to go over and talk to him. The other thing that this means is that Rodriguez, the backup tackle, has to come in and play on the uh, right side in place of Billy Bosworth. I'd watch for a delay right here. Something where they run receivers through and either delay the tight end or a back. Brown straight back against the three-man rush. Dumps it. There's the delay, but it's not very successful this time. Anthony Cimac, the tight end, makes the catch, and Sean Walker wraps him up. They ran the delay as I felt they would. Tennessee did a good job of their linebackers. Here, watch Rodriguez in his first try. It's good to give him a chance to get settled also. He got beat inside. The tackle late on Jeff Brown. Wilmsmeyer is back to punt. Carter waits in his 45. High, soaring kick this time. And Carter steps up to the 48-yard line. Makes the fair catch there. Punt of 35 and no return. 
Major League Baseball comes your way again tomorrow night. Doubleheader action at 7.30. Most of you will see Oakland against Detroit. The Tigers just continue to hang in there. Followed by St. Louis at San Diego. And the Cardinals starting to see any hopes of a division title fade away from them. The American League East. Detroit only three games back. Two in the loss count. Boston five and a half back. So we hope you'll join us for that. Henson and Poe are the running backs. Henson, the ball carrier. And Henson crosses into Louisville territory out of the 49-yard line. Tennessee has two young backs who are going to be good football players, Aaron Hayden, a freshman, and James Stewart. Look for them early in this ball game. Johnny Majors to give them some confidence and get the football to them. Second and seven for Tennessee. Kelly play action. Plenty of time. Floats it across the middle. Picked off by Buchanan. Buchanan still on his feet. Down to the Tennessee 30. Boy, Andy Kelly threw a beautiful pass. Again, they keep mentioning Carl Pickens. They rolled to Carl Pickens' side. And left a tight, tight end wide open. Mark Adams, the ball's right to him, just bounces off his hands. Great interception by Ray Buchanan, a great return. And again, keep the crowd in the ball games. What Louisville's trying to do. Watch the coverage on Pickens. This is why the tight end's open. Here's the roll of the corner right there. William Blackford. Here comes the safety over the top. You'll see in a couple minutes. That's left the tight end open. Huge break for Louisville at the Tennessee 32. Dawkins spun off one tackle, got to the 31-yard line. Nice job by Kerry Bailey to wrap him up, and Blumeyer has come back in at left tackle. And we are told from the bench that they were resting him for a series. What's important about this is the offensive line, particularly Billy Bosworth, met with the quarterback three different times this week and told Jeff Brown, stay in the pocket, we'll give you the time, we'll protect you. So far, he hasn't lived up to the promise. Jeff Brown has to get the ball to his tight end, Jose Gonzalez. Second and nine. Brown on the roll, he's in trouble. Got away twice. Floats it, and Boykin can't get it at the 23. LeBron looked like Houdini. Todd Kelly and Shazan Bradley both had shots at him and missed. Well, if Howard Snellenberger looked at Jeff Brown last week and said, I want you to stay in the pocket, he's not going to argue with the decisions this young man's making early tonight because he's on the run. He's running for his life. Protection's breaking down, and he's given them a chance with a scramble ability. But the problem is, when you have a scrambling quarterback, just like Major Harris, you can't practice broken route. You have a new route every play. If Howard Snellenberger says stay in the pocket, he's going to say, what pocket? You find it for me, I'll stay in it. He'll need a new quarterback if he stays in the pocket. Third and nine. Big, big play. Brom got it. Inside the 20 to the Tennessee 17. Mark Fletcher made the tackle. A gain of 14, and Brom was right on target that time. When you have trouble protecting, keep the tight end in. Here's Jose Gonzalez against Chuck Smith. They're going to double him to give Jeff Brom a chance to stay in the pocket and throw the route. And Brom is taking a shorter drop, too. At the beginning of the game, he was going back seven steps and meeting Tennessee linemen when he got there. Absolutely no success getting outside on Tennessee. Their linebackers run too quickly. You have to establish a running game inside before you can go outside. Mark Fletcher made the tackle to safety. They're coming up so fast, so play action pass again becomes a possibility. When they kept their tight in there, I like that. Howard Snellenberg is a veteran coach with a passing game. That's something Bill Walsh believed in a lot. Keep your tight end in. If you're having trouble, keep him in. Help yourself protection wise. Second and 11. Dawkins down 19 yards on eight carries in the first half. Here comes the Tennessee rush. 
Brom escapes. Throws and incomplete. There is a flag down on the play back at the 18-yard line. Boy, Tennessee putting are, severe pressure. Offside. Uh, there's a break for the Cardinals. I know Howard wants a drop back game, but the best single item he has going for himself right now with a Tennessee rush is the fact that Jeff Brown can scramble. It's gonna put more gray hair on Howard's head, though, but uh, I don't think there's room. There's always room for one more. <laughs> Section and six after the penalty. Louisville trailing Tennessee by seven. Boykin on the delay. To the five. Fumbled the football, but it's recovered by the flanker, Greg Brom. They will move it back because you can't advance the ball on a fumble, but Brom made the recovery and kept the ball in Louisville's possession. I think they're going to give it to him, Mike, because I think what they thought is he was down. Now, watch this play. Watch. You'll see Greg Brom come in here in a few minutes. There's a tackle. The ball's loose before he went down. There's Greg Brown, a heady player, the brother of the quarterback, Jeff Brown. And they gave him the recovery. They'll put it at the two. First and goal, Louisville. Tonight, if Louisville scores, the people out there might want to turn down the volume in the sets because this place is going to go crazy. They, they must think outside against the big rush of Tennessee and the size. Dawkins and Boykin in the eye. Boykin the deep man. Boykin gets it. Dive. Got to the one. And paid for it. Ben Talley and Roderick Lewis came through and Talley really nailed it. Ben Talley, number 90. You'll see him come into the picture right here. Make the tackle. Watch Talley step up there with his shoulder square. Again, with the size Tennessee has, you either have to go outside or over the top. Second and goal from the one. Dawkins. Got it close, but not in. He tried. Now here's where you have to think the same type of play or Greg Brown, or Jeff Brown is such a good athlete, quarterback sneak possibilities. Or how about the play action naked boot like? I'm looking, if, if I'm Howard Snellenberger and he's showing you how far it is, I think he's going to run this play. I look for the quarterback sneak. Louisville trying to tie with 9.42 to go first half against 11th ranked Tennessee in front of a record crowd. Quarterback sneak, no chance. He may have lost some yardage. Well, he Howard, was very tentative on it. Howard and I were thinking the same. You got to go. You've got to go for the touchdown. You have no. I don't think Howard has a decision to make right here. You don't like to take the ball off the line of scrimmage a great deal because Tennessee has such a strong front. You have to go over the top. I still wouldn't rule out the quarterback sneak again, but Jeff Brown, you're right. Look, tentative trying to go in there. They may take a timeout and talk it over. Lost about a foot, and that's exactly what they are going to do because this is too big a play to call something you don't want. We've got a timeout on the field, 8.54 to go in the half, and a seven-point game. ESPN's Thursday night CFA. Tennessee and Louisville is brought to you by Dodge. For performance, quality, safety, and value, welcome home, America. Fourth and two feet to tie. Louisville inside the one. Johnny Majors on the left. Howard Schnellenberger on the right. Much honored coaches in their profession. They both won national championships. Both at different schools. Majors at Pittsburgh. Snellenberger at Miami. Two of the better dress coaches also. Yeah. Without a doubt, one of the biggest plays in the history of Louisville football right here. 
Dawkins fumbled the hand off and he didn't make it. Too much penetration, Mike, by the defensive line of Tennessee. You watch the replay. Watch the right side of your screen. Number 23, the linebacker, Ernest Fields, actually went over the pile and met it. Just too much penetration. A 10-play drive after an interception fails to produce any points. It's still 7-0. The brilliant goal line stand by Tennessee's defense keeps it 7-0. If you're Tennessee's offensive coordinator, what do you like down here? Palms away right here. I'm trying one play to try to knock it out, and I'm gonna, I got a demoralized defense. I want to throw it. Throw it deep. They'll keep it on the ground on first down. They give it to Big Kenneth Campbell, a sophomore 6'2", 228 out of Chattanooga. He pounds his way up to the five. Louisville must confuse Tennessee. Watch the defensive line just before the snap of the ball. See them move. They have now confused the blocking assignments of ten Tennessee. They're just trying to give their little defensive linemen a chance against the big offensive line of Tennessee. Try to disguise and make them hungry. Second and six. And after the 10 yard line goes Tavio Henson. Some of the dignitaries on hand tonight as this is a huge event in Louisville. Paul Horning who played his high school football here and of course Muhammad Ali from Louisville. Boy, what an enormous ovation Ali got when he came out. He and Johnny Unitas, I think, got the two biggest rounds of applause. Third and two. Tennessee from their own ten. Henson. Stop at the ten. Tremendous defensive play by Kevin Gaines, who came up from the corner. And outside of the 75-yard bomb, Tennessee has been held to under 40 yards total offense in this half. Louisville defense doing an outstanding job. Again, we're in a situation where Louisville could go after the Tennessee punt. If they do, they must come from the outside because Tennessee really tightens down, as you see. Tom Hutton, the left footer, kicks it to Boykin. They'll have a chance to return this one from the 50 and got to the Tennessee 42. So once again, Louisville in good shape as far as field position. A 40-yard punt, an eight-yard return. Our game still, Tennessee seven, Louisville nothing. Time is running out on the 91 Cadillac closeout. If you don't hurry, you'll be closed. Tennessee, 6.58 to go in the half, and joining us tonight, Airship Shamu, making its first football appearance of the season here on ESPN. Shamu blimp on the first leg of a four-month goodwill tour of the Northeast for SeaWorld. Last two Louisville possessions have been at the Tennessee 32 and now the 42, and they need to take advantage of one of these breaks. Need to throw on first down. Option. Boykin with Dawkins in front. Nice play inside the 35. Right now, let's check in with Chris Fowler. All right, fellas, updating the baseball pennant races in the AL East. First place, Toronto leads Cleveland 7-1 in the fifth inning. Second place, Detroit trying to keep pace, trails the A's 4-1. U.S. Open tennis, Jimmy Connors lost the first set, trails 5-4 in the second set to Paul Harhus. Football news at halftime. Stay with us for that. Back now to Louisville. Thank you, Chris. Boykin now nine carries, 48 yards. It is second and two. Boykin again behind Dawkins. He's got the first down to the 30. Really been impressed with the way they have been able to run the ball inside. They have really done a good job running the football. Where they have to make their hay against the Tennessee defense is throwing the football. When you look at both, both these squads, the definite dominating factor is the Tennessee defense. Louisville has to beat the Tennessee, Tennessee defense to win this game. They have to come away with points on this drive, Mike. It'd be very important to either get three, tack three on the board, or get in the end zone for a touchdown. Last week, one of Jeff Brom's touchdown passes went to his brother, number 48, Greg Brom, the flanker.
and Louisville will spend its second time out here in the first half to talk it over with a first and ten situation from the Tennessee 30-yard line. Let's get out of the sideline. Back to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Well, guys, the Louisville defense has one goal. That's they outplay the opposing team's defense, not offense. And when Tennessee was able to hold their offense on the goal line, their challenge was to come out and hold the Tennessee offense, which they did. More importantly, we've got just a moment ago, William Blackford, the senior quick corner, has a hamstring. He's been nursing for a couple of weeks. He came out a minute ago, stretched it. He may see limited action the rest of the game. He will play, but he's having a little bit of problem now with that hamstring. Guys? All right, Jerry, thank you very much. Ball spotted at the 30. And there is Blackford on the sideline. And Louisville in good offensive shape right now, although they're down 7 to nothing. Schnellenberger talking with Jeff Brom. The storyline for our CFA Thursday night debut from sold out and more than sold out Cardinal Stadium. Tennessee with a big pass rush so far. And the big play in the game, the 75-yard bomb to Pickens. Louisville with only 68 yards of total offense, but they have kept the ball on the ground and used up a lot of times. Probably the biggest series in this game was the goal line stand by the Tennessee defense that kept that seven-point lead. Brown straight back to throw. Both backs in to protect him. Now he's going to scramble and got back to the line of scrimmage. Good hustle by middle linebacker Sean Walker. You can't blame pass protection on that play. Everybody was covered. To have good pass defense, you need a good rush. You need good coverage. Sean Walker just sat back, played good zone coverage. When he saw Jeff Brown take off, he shadowed him, made the play. Three-year letterman. No gain on the last play. It is second and ten. Dawkins. Maybe a yard. Chuck Smith made the stop with a jersey tackle. Howard has a tough night against the Tennessee defense. He's trying inside runs. He's trying to get the ball outside. He's trying to milk a score right now until he can get this offense settled down. He's going to need a big play out of Jeff Brown. Schnellenberger called this a landmark opportunity in the biggest game against the best opponent that we have ever had a chance to beat. 11th ranked Tennessee. Third and nine for Louisville. Brown four out of six, 33 yards so far. And he needs one here. Chased out of the pocket, shovel pass. Dawkins runs over one tackler, forced out of bounds at the 25. He'll be about four yards shy of the first down. Very slow developing play. You have to kick the field goal in this situation, but Ralph Dawkins, see Jeff Brown again. When you have a tough pass rush, you have to screen him, draw him, trap him. It's a screen. He just flipped the ball to Ralph Dawkins. You know, it looks like the tackles are doing a pretty good job. Brom is getting so deep that they are getting around on the outside, and you can only, uh, you can't keep a guy from any point in the field. When that particular play, Mike, he the screen, so he took a deep drop to try to bring those defensive ends up so that he could get the screen off. But I was impressed with the way Ralph Dawkins ran after he caught the football. Klaus Wilmsmeyer on the field. He Where ran. they spotted it will be a 42-yard attempt. And remember, the goalposts have been narrowed two and a half feet on each side this year. So they are the same dimensions as the NFL, and it makes it tougher. Last year, Wilmsmeyer was 9 out of 11 so far this year, 1 of 1. He's got it. Wilmsmeyer from 42 and puts the Cardinals on the board here in the second quarter. They trail number 11, Tennessee, 7 3. This is the Goodies Extra Strength formula that you made the best selling headache powder in the Southeast. The same reliable brand that's been relieving the pain and discomfort of headaches, arthritis, muscular aches and colds for more than 50 years. And the very same extra strength formula that Goodies has now... Kentucky Skyline.
Ryan, which uh, may soon see a 55,000-seat dome stadium as part of it. Either that or they will build it here on campus. The decision has been made. They are going to build the stadium. It's a question of what type and where, and that will be a huge boost to Howard Schnellenberger's program. Louisville to kick off. Carl Pickens and Dale Carter are deep. Carter led the nation in kick returns a year ago. He averaged 29.8 yards a return. You might want to split the kick. Either, either one you kick to will pick your poison. One of them is going to hurt you. If you can't put it in the stands, I wouldn't kick it up in the air. Pickens from the eight. Almost made it outside, but wrapped up on a beautiful tackle at the 18-yard line. Derek Hawthorne made a tackle that could have saved a huge return. Coming up at halftime, Chris Fowler will be in the studio. All the Major League Baseball scores and an update on the U.S. Open action. And then all of our analysts from all over the country in college football will be along for a halftime blitz, updating you on everything. And Mike Gottfried will be back for his first half analysis of this one. And it's been a good one so far. Tennessee leading Louisville, 7-3, 4.06 to go in the half. They'll keep it on the ground, and you can just see the confidence of this Louisville football team growing and growing. Leonard Ray made the stop. Well, you talked about a new stadium, and one of the problems in this old stadium for Tennessee right now, in the second quarter, you'd like to be going toward the big scoreboard so you know the time, and you have just a very little scoreboard in the corner down here that the quarterback has to find. So that may be a problem as we approach halftime for the quarterback. James Stewart is the tailback seeing his first action. Stewart finds the seam and goes out across the 30 near the 35-yard line. Sumter in on the tackle along with Hawthorne. We thought it'd be just a matter of time till those freshman tailbacks get in. James Stewart with a good cut off the toss play. Very highly recruited player out of high school. He along with Aaron Hayden, number 24. It's Tennessee, two outstanding freshman tailbacks. Stewart is from Morristown, Tennessee, and Johnny Major said he told his young backs, just hold on to it if you don't do anything else. Gets a couple. Once again, Leonard Ray had him wrapped up around the waist. Ray, the biggest lineman, but he's only 265. Tennessee with a run game plan right now against the Louisville defense. The one thing, if you're the secondary coach of Louisville, you just keep saying, where's Carl Pickens? Where's he at? Because they'll lull you to sleep and try to get the ball to Carl Pickens. Second and five. They give it this time to the fullback, Kenneth Campbell, and Campbell just powers his way up the midfield. Campbell, 6'2", 228. He is bigger than every one of the Louisville linebackers. You watch the offensive line in Tennessee with a good takeoff, how big they are. They actually showed pass on that play the left guard did to bring up the tackle. That's the one item that opened that play. Gain of 12 for Campbell. We're down to 220 in the half. Stewart on the toss. Campbell, nice block in front of him, and Stewart breaks it out down to the 25-yard line. I don't know if Andy Kelly checked that off, but he went outside against a heavy blitz by Louisville inside. Gain of 25 for Stewart. Watch this play. You see the blitz coming from Louisville? Everybody's inside. They had to have a bust. They got outflanked, and that opened it up for James Stewart to get outside. A bust on the defensive part of Louisville. Since Stewart has come into the game, four carries, 45 yards. First down, volunteer. Stewart again. More room to run. Down to the 18-yard line. Cully, the middle linebacker, knocked him down. He's out of Geneva, Illinois. Stewart is a senior, averaged nearly 10 yards a carry in high school. 25 touchdowns his senior year. And Tennessee will use a timeout, and Andy Kelly will go over to Johnny Majors and talk about this one with a minute 38 to go first half. 
This is really the only sustained drive that Tennessee has had tonight. It's been a good drive, and it's all been on the ground. They've just turned it over to the big offensive line, the running backs, but Louisville has had a couple blitzes on where they went inside and just got outflanked on the out outside of their defense. ESPN's NFL Game Day will come your way every Sunday at noon Eastern time. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann will bring you pro football's most comprehensive pregame show, everything you always wanted to know, and maybe even a little bit more. And at 7, Chris and TJ are back with prime time, where you'll see highlights of all the day's games. And Tom Jackson, class of 72. I'm sure tuning in tonight. TJ, good luck to your Cardinals. This drive, six plays, 64 yards, all on the ground, and Stewart has eaten up 52 of them. Ty Smith, the defensive coordinator, told me the other day that he has a young defense, so he expects big plays against him like he did early in the game, but he also expects them to make some big plays, and they need to try to make one down here. The one clock's in their favor. Minute 38 left in the half. Tennessee up 7-3 if you joined us late. They scored on a Carl Pickens bomb. Louisville countered with a field goal. That's the score. Hayden and Campbell are the backs. Hayden gets the carry and stutters across the 15 to the 14-yard line for a first down. Tom Cavallo made the tackle. Johnny Majors is showcasing his two rookie tailbacks. That was Hayden on the carry after James Stewart brought it most of the way. Quite a luxury to have three guys that you can run in and out of there to be your main ball carrier. Of course, he lost Chuck Webb and Tony Thompson from a year ago. Kelly, play action. Can't find anybody. Dumped out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Ben Sumter played it very, very well. Well, they ran, they ran, they ran, then they go to play action, and it doesn't work. Well, the coaches that are up here probably saw the defensive left end, Brian Hayes, trying to get overactive to stop the run and felt they could get Andy Kelly outside. Not a bad call by Johnny Majors. He's got 113 on the clock, but he still has two timeouts, so he can, he can milk this minute 13 and get himself in good position. Second and eight for Tennessee, and Kelly is going to have to use another timeout. Just noticed Howard Schnellenberger trying to get that crunch zone going. This is the enclosed end of the stadium that Tennessee is driving into, which makes it far louder. And, of course, the stadium seats 39, and you can see people standing everywhere. They expect anywhere up to 42,000 tonight. And it is a tribute to what Howard Schnellenberger has done with this program. You know, I don't think anybody, when Howard Schnellenberger took this job, Mike Gottfried, uh, thought it was a rational decision on his part. Uh, I know his family didn't. They said, Howard, you've done it again. You're crazy. But he knew what he was doing. He wanted to take the worst football team in the country, which is his term, and build it into a national champion, and he's about two-thirds of the way there. Really, people don't realize that when he went into Miami, Miami was in a similar situation. They were down. They didn't draw a lot of people to the Orange Bowl, and he built that program. So once you build a program, he talked about his background with Bear Bryant and playing for Bear and playing for Blanton Kyer and prepared him for these kind of rebuilding situations. He's an outstanding coach. Critical part of this game, a minute 13 to go in the half. Tennessee up 7-3 and driving. Second and eight. Hayden on the draw. on him, second ever gets him to the 10. Cavallo made the tackle again. They spread out the formation, so they made Louisville think it was a pass, and then they gave the ball in the draw to Aaron Hayden. Tom Cavallo makes the play, number 41. 47 seconds to go. Third and five. Kelly, play action. Throws to the goal line, stopped at the one. It's complete. It will be another first down and stop the clock with 36 seconds to go. Kevin Gaines made the tackle on Pickens. First and goal, Tennessee. Clock starting right now. Hayden is the single setback. And now Louisville will use a timeout to stop the clock to set the defense. 
They need to get some substitutions in on their goal line defense. Well, the situation is this. 35 seconds left. Tennessee can run a play because they have 35 they have 35 seconds left and a timeout remaining. So they don't have to worry about the ball carrier not being able to get up and not being able to run another play. What would you like down here on first and goal? Well, the way they're controlling the line of scrimmage, you have to go right at Louisville and the play where they're going to give the ball to tail back and let him go over the top. And Louisville have a hard time. To, they're going to have to move around a little bit and try to get penetration into the backfield to try to stop him from going over the top. Chris Fowler will join us at halftime with highlights of all the Major League Baseball games and an update on Jimmy Connors in the U.S. Open. And then all of our college football analysts from all across the country will be with you for a halftime blitz. We'll talk about the uh, state of college football right now and then come back to Mike Godfrey and have him talk about this game, which has been exciting so far. Tennessee's used their size, Mike, in this drive. Sure has. done a great job running the football. First and goal inside the one. 35 seconds left in the half. Tennessee leading Louisville 7-3. Stewart, Hayden, and Campbell are the backs. Hayden, outside. Touchdown, Tennessee. Roll Bino had a shot at him. But the rover back couldn't bring him down before he crossed the goal line. Tennessee went to the wishbone offense. Here you see the gift by Andy Kelly to Aaron Hayden. He starts up inside. A good play by number 24. Buchanan forced him outside. Johnny Majors reacting to that play call. 82-yard drive on 11 plays. And Wendell Ball comes on to add the point after. So Tennessee with a very impressive and time-consuming drive, as Mike Gottfried said, using the power of that offensive line and fresh tailbacks to ram it down the throat of the Louisville Cardinal defense. Johnny Majors had some concerns last night when we talked to him about his running back situation. But as you sat there, you could tell he had a lot of pride in those two young tailbacks, Aaron Hayden and James Stewart. And Tennessee fans who are watching this game tonight and SEC fans, they've got two pretty good running backs that they're going to get their running game going with when they start to enter the SEC phrase. And they have both teams do very difficult schedules this year. Joey Chapman has it teed up, and Boykin is going back inside the five. Cardinals have acquitted themselves well here in the first half, but they are still down to number 11, Tennessee, 14-3. And the goal line stand of Tennessee may be something we may want to remember for a long time about this game. Kept it from being a 7-7 tie. Beautiful kick that time by Chapman. Knocks it eight yards into the end zone. And they'll start from the 20. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, you don't think Johnny Majors was worried a little bit about the offense? When they scored a minute ago, he came along the bench here and went along individually and shook every hand of every offensive lineman, patted him on the head and said, great job with a giant smile. I think he's breathing a sigh of relief right now about his offense. Guys? Jerry may have been introducing himself. <laughs> those guys, most of those guys didn't play for him last year. Johnny's got a young team. You're right, Mike. If you're Howard Schnellenberger right now, this is not a time to take a ch any chances. Run one play, get to halftime, settle your team down, explain to them, hey, they played great. They just had a couple big missed opportunities on offense and a bust on defense. Dawkins is the single setback. Bob wants to throw. Screen. Dawkins. Nice job of using his blockers and Dawkins out across the 30 to the 35. Well, if you are going to pass, that's the way to do it. Nice and safe. Nice, safe pass. Can't get picked off. Get yourself a chance to pick up some yardage and try to get down in field goal position. Gain of 15. Jeff Brown again setting up the screen. Watch the deep drop. He's looking downfield. All of a sudden, he drops it off to Ralph Dawkins. Set up well. Had a couple of blockers who were actually behind him when he caught the ball and did a great job of letting them get out in front. 
Brom, six out of eight, but only 52 yards. Brom on the run, throws complete to his brother, who gets out of bounds. In Tennessee territory at the 48-yard line, Greg Brom makes the catch. They're one play away from trying to get in field goal position. They blew a couple timeouts early in the half, which is going to hurt him. But I talked about earlier playing a little safe. Howard Snellenberger is figuring he has to get this crowd back in the ball game. He needs one more throw down to about the 25-yard line, not having a timeout to try to set himself in field goal position. Wilmsmeyer has a 60-yard leg. He has done it in practice. Four-man rush. Brown has time. Now he's chased. Eating up the clock and gets out of bounds with only six seconds left. So now if you throw the ball downfield, you have to throw it to the sideline because they can't stop the clock unless you get the first down, which would stop it. He has to be thinking as he throws this football, I have to get a first down to set the clock, but then can I get my field goal team? You always work that. No timeouts, you work it in practice. Either he has to try to throw the ball to the end zone as deep as he possibly can or some kind of out route. You can't throw the ball to the middle now. Needs about a 15 to 17-yard sideline even to give Wilmsmeyer any kind of a shot. Trips right. Try to run for it. And they stop him at the 35, and that will end the half. 14 3, Louisville trailing the 11th ranked Volunteers of Tennessee. Stand by for Chris Fowler. Chris Fowler, he will join you right after this. Goal line stands leading 7 0. They really did, Mike. It was a great series for Tennessee. For Louisville, they needed to score. Here you see the first down and the pressure that the Tennessee defense put on the Louisville offense. Watch the quarterback sneak to the right. This is the second play. The key play on fourth down is where Herbert Henry, now you'll watch the fullback, watch out of the corner here. A.J. McCleskey, who's an offensive player, gets so much penetration that he made Herbert Henry make the block in the offensive back that there's no place for the tailback to go. No, Dawkins never had a chance. How about the second half? How can uh, either team adjust? Well, Louisville's just had missed opportunities. They've controlled the ball. They just have to make some big plays. All right. And we'll be right here for that second half kickoff in just a moment, right after you listen to this. Paul Horning, who was a legend here as a high school football player, went on to Notre Dame to win the Heisman Trophy and then to Green Bay under the legendary Vince Lombardi. Hall of Famer, just one of the many former Louisville greats on hand tonight, hoping for a big comeback in the second half. Howard Snellenberger says he's li never liked Notre Dame. He played on the same team with Horning because they recruited Horning and not him. Tennessee will get the ball to start the second half. Dale Carter, the very dangerous sprinter, got to the outside and got near the 30. Let's get down to the sideline right now and Jerry Punch. Yeah, guys, an optimistic note in the Louisville locker room at halftime. Defensively, they're pretty well pleased with their play, although they don't want to get beat deep in zone coverage. The free safety has to be very careful. And also, they need to watch the fullback. Tennessee using their fullback to their advantage here. Offensively, they have to watch their technique inside the 20-yard line. And they got to be very, very careful not to let Tennessee come in a hurry. They've got to change the snap count a little bit and put them sort of out of rhythm. Back up there. Thank you, Jerry. And let's see what if Tennessee starts the second half the way they ended the first with some power football. And they'll try with Hayden on the ground, and he dives forward across the 30 to about the 32. Aaron Hayden, the freshman out of Detroit. First half stats, Louisville actually wins in first downs, has a better passing percentage. But the rushing yards, especially in that last drive for Tennessee, and 75 yards out of their passing yards came on the one play to Pickens. Big statistic is they dodged the bullet with the two turnovers. Second and seven. Play action by Keller. Dumps it off. Hayden out of the backfield. Keeps his feet to midfield. Finally stopped by Ben Sumter, the right outside linebacker, but it's a gain of 18, and Kelly showing some poise there. The two, two things that help most is here you have Carl Pickens, who they have to double in cover two, the two-deep coverage. All 
also when you've got the running game going like they did just for half, that keeps the linebackers, makes them force up. Here's just a dump off to the tailback, Aaron Hayden, and he makes good yardage. This is a big drive for the Louisville defense. They must stop Tennessee. Hayden, first down from midfield. Got maybe a yard as Louisville really swarmed that time. And Mike Mills, number 56, and Brevin Smith, 52, were over to make the tackle. Well, Tennessee will be difficult to stop now because of the running game success they have. Pass, play action type passes because you're holding the linebackers, you're slipping the tight end behind, you're slipping pickings behind, and Tennessee likes routes that come in about 15 to 18 yards deep. Second and eight, Kelly straight back to throw. Looks for a secondary receiver. Loose ball! Smith's at the right place at the right time. He's a defensive lineman involved in pass rush right at this point. He comes off. Again, when you play a lot of zone coverage, you have, there's going to be people open, but what you have to be able to do is break on the ball, make the tackle. Brevin Smith recovers the fumble. Kenneth Campbell, the young fullback, dropped it after he made the catch and another break for Louisville, but they have to do something with these breaks. Boykin. The straight sweep, they've the not been able to get outside. They don't get much out of that, but at least the option gives them a better chance. Well, they've had such, such good offense here under Howard Snellenberger. They lost quarterback Browning Nagel, who graduated. Jeff Brown, last year, Howard Snellenberger put him in every game in the second quarter to try to give him some experience. And this is a young offensive team. They have to find a way to get to the end zone. They're going to need a big play. I still believe they need to get to the tight end, Jose Gonzalez. Tennessee offensive line getting a little work in between series. Second and nine, gain of one on the last play. Four-man rush. Brown has time, now he has to scramble. Throws, and throws low and behind Dawkins, who was on the out of the backfield. Once again, Mike, a situation where he had a good three, three and a half seconds to throw the football and couldn't find anybody. Howard Snellenberg has got Anthony Cmac at, at tight end right at this particular point. They kept him in the block. And what I believe happened here is Jeff Brown caught an, called an automatic and tried to get the ball to wide receiver, but Tennessee fooled him like the Louisville defense fooled Andy Kelly a little earlier. Showed blitz and then dropped out of it. And now the Cardinals facing third and nine at their own 48 yard line. Brom again with good time, steps up, throws, and throws it very wide of Randy Wyatt, who was open at the 30 yard line. Just think of the quarterbacks he's had Jim Kelly, Vinny Testaverde, Bernie Kozar. Browning Nagel, among the few. He's had a lot of great quarterbacks in Greasy. his time. And Bob Greasy, he compares Jeff Brown to Bob Greasy. And he's just going to have to coach him and bring him along. And that's what it's going to take, time. So another wasted opportunity by the Cardinals. And Dale Carter is deep to receive Wilkes Myers punt, which is a mortar shot, a mile high. And fair catch made at the 12-yard line. So Tennessee, the team that was second in the nation in turnover margin a year ago, has turned it over themselves three times tonight. ESPN's Thursday night CFA, Tennessee and Louisville, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation, and by Smooth Bush Beer, an easy drinking Bush Light. 12.44 to go, third quarter of play from Louisville, Kentucky. Tennessee leads by 11. The Volunteers have the ball first and 10 at their own 13. Hayden gets it to the 16-yard line. Leonard Ray, number 97, in on yet another tackle. Looks like Johnny Majors with his young offensive team has settled on the run, but what he doesn't want to do is get in second in long situations. Could be 
this is second and six right here. Play action. Nice faking by Kelly. Throws on the run and dropped again. Kelly has been victimized. Von Reeves this time. He's thrown some good passes and people haven't been able to hold on to him. Hope you'll be with us every Saturday starting 1130 Eastern College Game Day. Chris Fowler and our old buddy Lee Corso for a preview of the day in college football. Another Louisville alumni. Next Saturday we have two games for you. 1230 Hawaii against number 15 Iowa. Wyoming against number 12 Colorado. Of course Lee Corso was very successful as a coach here at Louisville. And there he is. 28 and 11. Now anybody will take that. Third and six. Pressure on Kelly. Gets away. Throws and complete at the 35-yard line to Pickens for a first down. Pickens gained 917 yards receiving last year, was first in the conference. He is only the second Tennessee receiver ever to go over 900 yards per season. Nobody's ever had 1,000 with all the guys they had. Uh, Galt, Morgan, McGee, Clayton, Miller, and Harper. Nobody over 1,000 yards. It's amazing. They were all playing together. They only had one football. <laughs> And they probably had a back every year that gained 1,200. But Pickens is something special. Big play for Tennessee. And a first down at their own 35. Hayden on the draw. Good looking freshman running back out to the 47 yard line. Tackled by number 45. Derek Hawthorne made the stop. Tennessee, first down. Watch the left side of the Tennessee line here. Bernard Daphne. They're just starting to wear out Mel Mills. You, on the defense, and they're running the ball so well, they're just overpowering the Louisville front. Now you've got to gamble if you're the Louisville defensive coordinator, Ty Smith. Hayden, seven carries, 30 yards. One of three tailbacks Johnny Majors has used. Kelly looking all over the place and makes a very wise decision and just throws the ball out of bounds. That's what you expect from a senior. Johnny Majors told us again last night you want balance. He'd like to have great balance. Run and pass. His running game has been very good tonight. His passing game off a little bit. You know, Mike, Tennessee wanted to get out of this game. They, they never, like a lot of teams, they'll schedule an away game. They never thought the year 1991 would come. But so they tried to buy this game back to move it to Knoxville. But Bill Olsen, he, he said, no way, we're keeping it here. Kelly, 7 out of 13, 129 yards. Hayden on the draw. Very close to another first down at the Louisville 43. Canoodle made the tackle. And the officials will stop the clock and they will measure with 10.54 to go. Of course, this is the premier telecast of our Thursday night CFA package for you. We've got some outstanding games, as well as this one. Tennessee leading 14 to 3. And Mike, I wanted to ask you about one thing that we brought up at the beginning of the game. The emotion that Louisville had to their advantage and all the adrenaline these players are going to get. Well, that's gone. Sometimes you can spend it quick. And uh, Tennessee, the more veteran ball club, has paced themselves well. You might wonder as you look at that left side of the line, and that's where they're gaining yards. Bernard Daphne is 6'6", 309 pounds, going against Mel Mills, 6'3", 246. Leaning on the whole game. Third and less than a yard. Quarterback keeper, first down, Tennessee. And he's telling the quarterback on this. Of course, that is the greatest contrast that you talked about, that mismatch, but uh, all over the place. Tennessee has a big advantage. 38 pounds is a big, big advantage, and they're not just big, they're good. Where it starts to show is in the second half. You eventually wear down, and Louisville just doesn't have enough depth to substitute you from the defensive line and the linebacker. Kelly, five men in the pattern. Chase. Kelly slides in safely at the 38-yard line. Excellent coverage by the secondary of the Louisville Cardinals. He went to a double wing, double slot setup, sent everybody out, and couldn't find anyone. Crowd wanted a clip. As Andy Kelly was scrambling, it appeared that there was a clip in the offensive backfield that uh, was not called. Four on the scramble for Andy Kelly. It is second and six. 9.40 to go for the fourth. 
but it's the single setback for fullback. Kelly goes to the air again, completes this one to his Kelly's tight end Mark complete. Adams out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. But a short gain and a flag is down. Adams complete to number 83, Mark Adams. Had very few penalties tonight, the second game of the year for Louisville, only the first for Tennessee. This was a late flag. We have holding and you heard you can't say 10 yards now. Now holding is called from the spot of the foul, no longer from the line of scrimmage. So you'll see 10-yard holding penalties turn out to be anywhere from 12 to 20 yards. Mark this down. If Louisville gets back in the game, this is a big play. Unless Tennessee can overcome it, throwing the ball down the field. They were going to be in good situation on about the 32-yard line, third and two. Now they're all the way back past the 50. Second down, Screen 19. draw in this situation. I was just going to say, Johnny Majors throughout his career has always seemed to call plays opposite of what the defense is looking for in this situation. But this time, Kelly will want to go to the air. Dumps it off. Down to the 42-yard line. Tavio Hansen back in there. Kelly and Cavallo converge on the tackle and we're back near the original line of scrimmage at the Louisville 43 yard line. That's all you want to do as a play caller. Good call by Johnny Majors and Phil Fulmer, the offensive coordinator to Tavio Hansen. Just a little delay out of the backfield. He knew he'd get a big drop out of the linebackers with second and 19. Pick up a few yards, get yourself back in the third and 10 situation. Good call. Third and 10 and that was Von Reeves, the big tight end checking in. Once again, double slot. with a pump, rifles over the middle, and this time Pickens can't hold it. Let's go. Kelly has thrown the ball behind several receivers. Most of them have still been catchable. This one may not have been. A lot of drop passes. I think this is behind Carl Pickens. They force him inside. Tennessee likes the in routes. He had his eye on the inside backer, Andy Cully. Here's Mills now pushing up the field, gets past Daphne this time, almost gets to Andy Kelly. Puts him in a fourth down situation now. Andy Kelly, the quarterback, is also a punter. And they may use him to pooch punt. That's who's back there standing inside the 50. They force you to keep your defense on the field when they do this. So you really don't have a return on. Nice high spot. Buchanan calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 13-yard line. That is a very effective play. We've got a timeout with 8.19 to go third quarter after a 28-yard punt and no return. Quite honestly, we can't wait. Could be one of the great games of the year. Houston at Miami. I must have had 20 calls in the last two days about that game, and I told him, I said, listen, fellas, I'm like a coach. I've got two games before I get to that one. So <laughs> I, I can't look ahead. Tonight I'm working with Mike. I work Thursdays and Saturdays. Godfrey. Louisville takes over to its own 13-yard line, trying to get something started and they have gone to Dawkins at tailback. Tennessee has it. And then it's loose again. Who got it the second time? Tennessee. Frustrated Howard Snellenberger. Watch Ralph Dawkins. Usually lined up at fullback, lined up at tailback on that play and just a helmet by Ernest Fields on the ball. That's the first play I believe Ralph Dawkins went in at tailback. Chuck Smith caught the ball in the air. He's already had a couple of sacks. And Tennessee with a huge opportunity here to increase its 14-3 lead. Stewart, the tailback, wrapped up. Pretty tackle by Raul Bino. Excellent run support player. Raw Bino is a great defensive player versus the run. You'll see him. Here's a toss sweep. James Stewart turns up. Watch Raw Bino. Oh, my goodness. Tackle him just how you want it. It's a gain of four. The Tennessee defense trying to root on the offense. Get some more points on the board. They're up by 11. Kelly, draw, Stewart. Room to run. Stewart inside the five to the goal line. Touchdown.
Freshman James Stewart from Morristown, Tennessee. Watch Andy Cully, the middle linebacker, number 62. He sees a drop of Andy Kelly, so he thinks pass, but he has to protect his legs right here. He just gets doubled, and they take him right out of the play. Here's another look. Follow James Stewart, the running back. See all the good blocks. There's the block on Cully. There's the block on Cavallo. Now he just works his way in the end zone for the touchdown. The point after is good, and Stewart with seven carries, 65 yards, and a big, big touchdown as Tennessee has taken a 21-3 lead on Louisville. Defensive coordinator Ty Smith. He's got a young defensive team. Last week against Eastern Kentucky, the offense made two turnovers. Eastern Kentucky made two touchdowns right after. Same thing here. A turnover, they scored. It's a young defense. They have to learn that they really have to stop the opposing offense after a turnover. Tennessee made three turnovers, only cost them three points. That was the first turnover for the Louisville Cardinals. Chapman to kick to Ray Buchanan waiting at the goal line. And Chapman crushes another one. This one out of the end zone, hit the goal post. Let's check in right now with Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, fellas, an update from the U.S. Open. Jimmy Connors has won the third set against Paul Harhus. At age 39, he has one set away from a berth in the semifinals. Harhus held his serve in the first game of the fourth set. We'll keep you posted. Sports and we'll have highlights. Back down to Mike, Mike, and Jerry in Louisville. Bless you, Jimmy. 39-year-old kicker makes us all feel good, and the 34-year-old punter, Temple, he should feel pretty good now. Well, tough spot here for the Cardinals. They have to start from their own 27-27 to go third quarter. They're down 21-3, to and Jeff Brom needs to make something happen with the passing game. Play action. Nice move to get away from the pressure. First down at the 30 to the 31 yard line. Down to the sidelines and Jerry Punch. Guys, a minute ago, we saw defensive coordinator Ty Smith talking to his young defense here at Louisville. What he was telling them is, guys, our motto is play one play at a time. Forget about what happened just a minute ago with the score. We must play the rest of this game. We must find out what we're made of. We're young. We can play with these guys. I know we can. Let's give them a game. Ron hustles them up to the line of scrimmage. Pocket collapsing on him again. Once again, he scrambles out. Now he wants to throw. He's got a man wide open. He's got it. At the 25-yard line, Jose Gonzalez was wide open. Brom delivered it, and he dropped it. Holy cow. Said earlier, Mike, you can't practice broken plays. They just happen. Watch Jose Gonzalez come off the line of scrimmage. He's on a middle read. He's trying to get the ball down the middle. He sees he's open. He's calling for the ball. He just wants to run a little bit too soon. He took his eyes off the football. Could have been a huge play for the Cardinals. They face second and ten. Rob dumps it over the middle. His receiver fell down. Dawkins stumbled as he came out of the backfield. Now Larry Lacewell, the defensive coordinator, leading 21 to 3. He'll turn him loose on Jeff Brown and try to give him more pressure. Send some linebackers every now and then. Louisville's not huddling, not allowing Tennessee a chance to get an extra DB on the field. This is something they did in the Fiesta Bowl with great success against Alabama. Third and ten. Brown under pressure again. Trying to scramble to buy some time. Throws complete. And this time, the big tight end Gonzalez did hold on to it. A gain of 18. And Brom, give him all the credit in the world on that one because he bought the time as Casey Rogers had two different shots at him. He's, Howard's lucky tonight. He has a scrambling quarterback so he can stay away from the rush. You see, he ducks in, ducks out. This is what he did so well in high school. And that's why it's so hard for him to break. He had such great success at Trinity High School here in Louisville, scrambling around, making plays. Cardinals ball at their own 49. Brown with time, throws, and once again, Gonzalez is the target, but once again, he can't hold it. So the tight end's open. He just has to catch the football. That's two that he's, he's dropped. Boy, it's very deflating for a quarterback to run for your life and then unload and watch somebody drop it. They just need to get in the end zone to get a little confidence back. Brown, the Kentucky High School player of the decade, not the year, the decade. Dawkins. Down to the Tennessee 46. 
gain of about five. Dawkins out of Jacksonville, Florida. Had 162 yards rushing a week ago, but that was Eastern Kentucky. This is Tennessee. Third and five. No huddle offense by the Cardinals. Comes the blitz. He unloads to Dawkins. Slipped a tackle, but couldn't stay in bounds. Would have had the first down if he had maintained his balance. What a nice job by Ernest Fields. Got just enough of him to force him out. Interesting decision here for Howard Schnellenberger. Fourth and five, not huddling. Trying to keep the extra defensive back off the field. It's opened up, throwing the football. He's either going for it or trying to draw him off sides, and he is going. Brom needs time. He has it. Throws deep sideline. Man up, incomplete. And the reason was Carter, the best athlete on the field, came over and leveled Dawkins. Dale Carter's a junior college transfer. Been to Tennessee, played last year from Ellsworth Junior College. Watch Jeff Brown. He finds a secondary receiver. He stayed in the pocket. He comes off. He throws. Now watch Dale Carter break on the football. This is a completion. He put his helmet right on the football and caused a fumble. And Brom has to be terribly frustrated. That was Sean Jackson, number 27, the intended receiver. He has put one ball after another right on the numbers, and his teammates haven't been all able to hold it for him. It's a good series for the ball. Even though they came up a little short. Hayden on the delay for Tennessee. Fumble. Tennessee has it back in the Louisville 33. The recovery made by Von Reeves, the tight end, hustling downfield, a gain of 21. Watch the left side of the Tennessee offensive line just get into their blocks. They're just knocking the Louisville front off the ball. Aaron Hayden with a big hole, and then he just didn't wrap the football up, and he was very lucky. Von Reeves, the tight end, followed the play, made the recovery. Another first down for Tennessee at the Louisville, 33. Hayden again, power football game, maybe a yard this time. Of course, Tennessee lost as much talent as anybody in the country. These are guys in the NFL. McCray, Davis, Harper, Webb, Amsler, the fullback, Anthony Morgan. These are all offensive starters, all drafted out of the NFL. Three guys were first-rounders. And there was a flag down on the last play. It is a holding call against Tennessee. Mike, I want to make a point as you see that graphic right there. We have a 10-yard hole in the University of Tennessee. We'll replay second down. A reason I think the Tennessee defense is so good this year is that they always practice, practiced against those players from Tennessee on the offense. And you have tackles like McCray playing against you in practice all the time. You just get better. And I think that has really helped the Tennessee defense. Spring practice against those players and practicing against them in the ball. You saw them attending the corner on the sideline. Draw play. And Hayden can't go anywhere this time. Carter, of course, had a hamstring coming into the ball game. May have aggravated. He doesn't look in too much discomfort, though, does he? What a brilliant, brilliant player he is to come out of junior college and make all SEC in your first year and have the impact he did. Kentucky right down the road. It's, it's the home of the Eastern Kentucky football team that played here last Saturday. He was able to get outside. Louisville lost contain. Talk about a big situation here now for the Louisville defense. Third short. Third and about two. Remember, Tennessee has hammered the left side. Boy, have Offensive line against the Louisville defense. Hayden is the single setback. The strength of the formation to the right. And Kelly wants to throw. Crosses him up, completes him to Pickens. And Pickens inside the 20. 
it will be a first down. Tennessee went to three receivers on the right side. Andy Kelly with just a safe throw. They took the two outside receivers and moved them up the field and just slipped Carl Pickens in the flat for the three-yard gain in the first down. Forced out by Blackford. Tennessee with a chance here to put this one away. Pickens, four catches tonight, 98 yards and a touchdown. That came on a 75-yard bomb. Hayden again. This time wrapped up by Cavallo, the outside linebacker. Major League Baseball, a doubleheader comes your way tomorrow night at 7.30. Most of you will see Oakland against Detroit. The Tigers trying to stay alive in the American League East race with all that home run power. And then the St. Louis Cardinals, the surprise of the National League this year against the San Diego Padres. And the Tigers, three games back, only two in the loss column. Boston still with a chance, five and a half back, but they only trail by four in the loss column. Second and 11, draw Hayden, slips a tackle, outruns another one. And the Cardinals finally swarm him, but not until he gets to the 15-yard line. It will be third and six, Brian Hayes, the first one in on the tackle. Well, you know one thing for Louisville, they are outmanned. They don't have nearly as much depth, but these guys really hustle, and that's what Howard Schnellenberger's had since he came here. Small and quick. They've been that way. The defense is young. The offense is young. Got a young quarterback. But they'll mature as a football team. The back's to the wall right now. Tennessee may take a timeout. And they will stop the clock, and Kelly wants to go over and talk to Johnny Majors, who is coming off back-to-back SEC championships, and that happens uh, so seldom in such a league like this. The SEC just so outstanding, and Majors has done a brilliant job after coming from Pitt. There's the rushing yard story, and really, Louisville had the edge early in the ball game, but Tennessee turned it into smash, smash, smash mouth football at the end of the second quarter when they just decided, let's get something going on the ground. Well, they have. Take away the big play to Carl Pickens. Everything's been on the ground. They've dropped some passes, Tennessee, but the Louisville defense has been out there a long time in the second half, and early in the season, tells a tale conditioning-wise. They haven't been able to substitute. Tennessee substituted backs. They kept fresh backs in there. They've used a lot of formations with a lot of people, and they are wearing down Louisville. The airship Shamu is giving us all of our aerial camera work tonight. The blimp and a four-month goodwill tour on behalf of the Sea World Parks in Orlando, San Diego, San Antonio, and Cleveland, Ohio. Two fifty-seven to go, third period, third and six for Tennessee. The Volunteers already up 21 to 3. And a crowd of over 40,000 on its feet, hoping the defense can stop them. Kelly trying to adjust some of his personnel. Stewart is the single setback. Stewart gets the draw. And Louisville has it again. Cavallo made the hit. Kelly came to the line of scrimmage. I'm sure he had a pass play call. He looked at the front, the linebackers, there was only a 4-1 front. Andy Cully, the middle linebacker, now comes off the play, almost makes the tackle. Tom Cavallo makes the tackle, forces the fumble. Big turnover for Louisville. Cully, the middle linebacker, at only 223. So Louisville has stayed alive by the fact that they have four Tennessee turnovers. But Mike, there reaches a point where if you don't turn those into points, they don't matter much anymore. Now you're right, Mike. This is, again, Jeff Brown has to get a big play. They'll keep it on the ground to the tailback Dawkins, who has played both tailback and fullback tonight. Let's get down to the sidelines and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, senior free safety Dale Carter is back in the ballgame. A lot of concern a little bit ago. He pulled a hamstring last Friday. He wore a mobile electrical stimulation unit up until two days ago to get that hamstring ready to play. Now, he's been stretching on the sidelines. Not sure how long he'll be able to play here in the last part of the game. Thanks, Jerry. Brom on second long is sacked by Bailey. The senior from Morgantown, West Virginia. 
He just beat John Bach, the offensive left guard. He just had a quick explosion. And when you get in this situation, you know Louisville has to pass. It's an advantage for the defensive lineman. That's the fourth sack of the night for Tennessee. And Brom has been harried many other times. Dawkins trying to do it on his own. Nothing but white and orange out there waiting for him as he crosses the 15 to about the 17-yard line. Louisville doesn't recruit offensive linemen. They recruit defensive linemen and then make them into offensive linemen. Sean Walker, the middle linebacker, is the Tennessee player down. So I was saying, Mike, they, they, in their recruiting process, Howard Snellenberg has done such an outstanding job here, but when he goes out to look for linemen, he tells his recruiters, don't bring me any offensive linemen. I want defensive linemen. I want to put them on defense. If they can't make it on defense, then I'll move them over to offense. Well, Penn State gets most of them anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> they get a lot of them. That's a lot like uh, Buddy Ryan's philosophy about offensive linemen. You can make offensive linemen. You don't have to... You don't have to come up with them. Well, a lot of people feel like the last stop for a player is the offensive lineman. If you recruit one, you can't play, then you have a big manager. Of course, Tennessee had two first-round draft choice offensive tackles last year. Those guys were some players. Back to the sideline again, uh, Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, Louisville's junior tailback or halfback, Daryl Boykin, who transferred from Kansas, has not played in the second half. He has a strained Achilles tendon. Questionable if he'll play at all. They say he could go, but unless they absolutely want to put him in, and that Achilles tendon needs to have its rest. Tough break for Boykin. All right, Jerry, and right now it's fourth down. And Louisville facing a fourth and eighth. They will have to kick it away. Klaus Wilmsmeyer is on to kick, and Carter, who has not had much of an opportunity to break one tonight, waiting back at the 40. 18 yards to return. Unbelievable performance. Wilmsman crushed this one. Carter back at the 28, and he had signaled for a fair catch. When that ball was halfway there, he signaled for a fair catch. It was sort of one of those, oh, I wish I hadn't put my arm up, but I think the official saw me. Then he wanted to run, but the official did see him. A 55-yard punt right now. Let's check in with Chris Fowler. All right, fellas, a pennant race update now. Toronto is clobbering Cleveland in the top of the ninth. It is 13-1. The Jays on their way, possibly, to going four up over the Tigers, who are trailing Oakland 4-1. Jose Canseco has been ejected for arguing balls and strikes. Third place, Boston tied with Seattle in the 10th. Highlights on baseball tonight following the game. Back to Louisville. Tennessee takes over at its own 24-yard line. Hayden. Room to run again up to about the 37, and there's a flag down late in the play. Check that for you. Tackle made by Ray Buchanan, and there is Howard Schnellenberg. Said when he got here, we didn't have a practice field. We had a mud hole. And he built this literally. This program was built from absolutely nothing. Look at the comparison. The first three years, he said when he went out to his first practice, he said he thought he had five guys on the entire roster that could play Division I football. He said, I was an optimist. We only had three. Well, he's got a lot of Norman Vincent Peele in him because he came in here saying he'd turn this program, and he has. The two probably top coaching jobs that have been done in the last five years of rebuilding situations is Howard Snellenberger here, Bill McCartney at Colorado, what exactly. he turned that program into. It was a holding call on Tennessee. They'll back it up. It is a first and 12 because the ball is marked from the spot of the foul. Kelly on the half roll had it knocked away. Nice job coming over by Derek Hawthorne, who has had a fine night. Don't have to worry about Hawthorne not understanding defense. He already has a uh, biology degree. He's working on one in chemistry, so he's got the smarts to figure it out. Mike Louisville's continuing to schedule a lot of opponents in the future. The Tennessee's here tonight. Florida State comes in here the same day that they have the Breeders' Cup here in Louisville, and they're getting top-notch opponents to come in and play here in Louisville. Second and 12. Kelly with time. Throws short. Completes it to his tight end. Mark Adams, another loose football. But may have come after the whistle, and Tennessee recovers anyway. Kelly and Cavallo again in on the stop. 
Boy, the ball has been loose several times on Tennessee's side, and you know Johnny Major just hates that. First game for Tennessee. Here's the little quick game. See the three-step drop by the quarterback and the little throw right here to the tight end? Mark Adams, zone coverage, break up, try to force the fumble. Well, Louisville's put some wicked hits in there tonight to get the ball loose. It's third and six. Tennessee with four turnovers in this game. Kelly dumps it short again. Again, I said earlier, I think the lights are, are, are a problem here. And the other thing is it's a flat surface for a quarterback out there. There's no crown. Uh, receivers are having trouble. Here's Andy Kelly just throwing the safe delay pass. Sets it up. There's the pass. A little too high, a little too close. May have thrown it too hard. Andy Kelly with the interception. Now again, it goes to Jeff Brown to make something happen. Brown to throw, guns this one almost intercepted by Tennessee. Breaking on the ball very well, Jeremy Lincoln, who Johnny Major said should be an all-SEC cornerback. Ran track this spring, 5,500 meters, 220. And boy, has Tennessee gotten mileage out of track people in their football program. Nearly picked off that time, second and 10 for Brown. Dawkins out of the backfield on a little swing. Dawkins still on his feet to the 25-yard line. And that will be a Louisville first down. It is also the end of the third period of play from Louisville, Kentucky, where 11th-ranked Tennessee continues to lead the Cardinals 21-3. Ten minutes to go. Tennessee leading Louisville 21-3. But the Cardinals have a first down at the Tennessee 25-yard line. Turnovers for Tennessee. The Cardinals have yet to convert. Brown, 11 out of 20, 106 yards. Over the middle, complete to his tight end, c -Mac. Ingram makes the stop. What is this hurry-up offense doing? Does two things. First of all, it keeps the Tennessee defensive personnel, the extra defensive backs from coming in, but also usually you'll just repeat the defensive call, so it's limiting Tennessee what they can do on defense. Gain of five. They've only been able to blitz once. Brown on the run. Close it for the end zone. Touchdown, Randy Wyatt. for two. You have to go for two points right now. The score is 21 to 9. If you can get it to 21 to 11, now you're within range of a, of a touchdown, two-point play, field goal to win the ball game. So that's exactly why Howard's going for two. Dawkins and Quinn are the running backs behind Braun.
Tennessee's going to have to make some adjustments to that hurry-up offense, and I'm sure they're sitting over there right now talking about trying to get some different calls in between plays. The other thing, Johnny Majors has probably told him, next guy that drops the ball walks home. <laughs> Five turnovers. Pickens, 15, Carter, 18, are waiting for the kick. Carter at the goal line, he'll take it out. He has blazing speed. Carter all the way to the 45-yard line. He led the nation in kickoff returns a year ago, and that is why. But he comes up limping down to the sidelines and Jerry Punch. A fellow who chartered a plane to be here tonight from New York City, from the New York Jets, Browning Nagel. You were part of the last year's 10-1-1 season. You're going to be pretty proud of the, your uh, successor here, Jeff Rom. I'm very proud of him. He's doing a great job tonight. He's coming out showing a lot of poise. Uh, the defense has done a great job, and they're down, but they're not out. And I think they can do it. A lot of confidence here from the man who did it for a number of years here, Browning Nagel. Guys, thank you. All right, Jerry, thank you very much. And this is a big defensive series for Louisville. Hayden, excellent run, slipping, tackles all the way down to the Louisville 45-yard line. Aaron Hayden out of Detroit, Michigan. In his high school career, he only rushed for 4, 4,800 yards and 53 touchdowns. They keep pounding that left side. Mel Mills had a chance at a number 56. He just ran out of the tackle. Made him miss, and that's the sign of a good back who can make people miss. Aaron Hayden, number 24, freshman. It is second and a yard, and Hayden has gained 74 yards on 13 carries. Campbell, the fullback. Very close to the first down inside the 45-yard line. Hill made the tackle. Marcus Hill, the right outside linebacker, converted high school running back. And the officials are going to stop the clock. And it looks like they are going to bring in the change to measure. Was something to cheer about. And Kelly signals it correctly. It is a Tennessee first down. Kicking game early in the season can play such a big factor against you. Dale Carter's return just made this drive. Tennessee has rushed for 208 yards tonight. Louisville for 75. And Johnny Majors would like nothing better than to see a grind it out drive here with no fumbles. Kelly. They'll try to run. And hammered as he got inside the 40-yard line. Kelly has that, uh, that kind of quickness that lets you avoid the first pass rusher, but he is not going to uh, skate his way into the Hall of Fame. No, he, he's taking advantage of the fact that they've run so well to the left side that the defensive end, Brian Hayes, on the back side is so conscious of trying to help on the run that the outside bootleg is there, which Kelly just took. Faked the run, was able to get the corner. Gain of five for Andy Kelly, and now he will use one of Tennessee's timeouts and wants to talk to Johnny Majors, who gives him a round of applause. 12.49 to go in the game. We'll be back in a moment. ESPN's Thursday night CFA, Tennessee and Louisville, is brought to you by Subaru. It's what you drive. 12.49 left in the ballgame from Louisville, Kentucky. Tennessee, 21. Louisville, 11. Tennessee with a second and five. 39-yard line. Louisville showing blitz, and Kelly wants to change the play. Goes for the short pass. Now pumps and throws deep and overthrown intended for Pickens. And once again, the Louisville defense, as Kevin Gaines on the coverage, fooled Kelly. They forced him to change the play, and then they dropped back. Update on Jimmy Connors. He has won the fourth set and will force a fifth. He just loves those four-hour matches. Well, for Kevin Gaines, you had to be worried a little bit throughout that island with Carl Pickens. Third and five. Huge play here. Hayden trying to get outside. He stopped short. Horse collared by Tom Cavallo. And now, what does Johnny Majors do on fourth and one or two? I think Johnny punts. 
tries to punt the Louisville offense in the hole. He's taking some time here. It will be fourth and two. May take a delay a game and punt the football. The wheels are turning on both sidelines. And the play clock is at 15 seconds. And Tennessee in no hurry to go back to the huddle, and that's exactly what they're going to do, Coach. Johnny Majors is believes in the kicking game. I, I just, so the first thing he thought of was fourth and three. I may be able to get the first down, but I'll tell you, I believe in the kicking game. I'm going to pin those Louisville Cardinals down inside the 20. Mike, you made a good point that it just during the break that Louisville's no huddle also is increasing the opportunities they're going to have on the field because they're really using the clock. Makes that 15 minutes extend to about 25. <laughs> So now Schnellenberger declines <laughs> the call, and Tom Hutton will punt the line scrimmage to the 37-yard line. Hutton, that left-footed kicker, and Johnny Majors told us uh, he only returned a punt against the left-footed kicker once and dropped it. And Hutton gets the good bounce, but now it's coming back all the way toward the 15-yard line. So it's a net of 21 yards, but Louisville will still start inside its own 20-yard line. If you're an NFL fan, be sure to watch game day. Every Sunday at noon, Chris, Tom, and Joe will bring you the most comprehensive report on what's coming up in the NFL that day and night. And then at 7, Chris and TJ are back with prime time. You'll see the highlights of all the day's games in the National Football League. They'll keep it on the ground. Dawkins gets a couple. Sean Walker makes the tackle, and we have an update on the U.S. Open. The score that we showed you just moments ago was not updated. Jimmy Connors has won in five sets and has reached the U.S. Open semifinals. He may feel, he's only 39. He may feel like 60 by the time he gets out of it. There's the bomb. Brom to Brom. Incomplete. Had a shot at his brother deep down the near sideline and overthrew. Clock stopped with 11 minutes and 12 seconds to go, and Schnellenberger would have liked to have that one. Well, what he'd like to have is, you know, the first option there looked like the fullback coming out of the backfield, but Jeff Brown and his brother Greg probably did that since they've been eight years old <laughs> in the backyard trying to hook up for that bomb. Must have been a big backyard. He threw that one about 65 yards. Third and seven. Trying to keep the drive alive. They dump it off. And you might blame Dawkins for dropping that ball, but he was doing the only thing he could to try to pick up the first down. He needed to try to move out of the way of the tackler as Sean Walker was coming hard. And if he catches the ball in his tracks, they don't go anywhere. He was trying to make something happen. So Wilmsmeyer will have to come on the kick. And guess who's back there? Carter. The other thing, if you're Johnny Majors right now, you're telling your offensive coordinator, run, crank up the run. Now they got Pickens back there because Parker came off limp. They don't lose much in this trail. Wilsmeyer bombs one. Pickens to 33. He's gone. Wilsmeyer will never catch it. Pickens, touchdown, Tennessee. Mike, sometimes you can outkick your coverage, and that's exactly what happened on this play. Boss Wilsmeyer really got a spiral in deep distance, and you can see there's no coverage. He makes the first player miss, and then after that, he's got the sideline. 67 yards, and once he was out there, there's not a soul on that field that was going to catch him unless it was his teammate, Dale Carter. The point after is good. And the Volunteers of Tennessee behind two huge plays from Carl Pickens lead it 28-11. 
had the good fortune to be up there a couple of times in the last two years. 28-11 here. The Volunteers leading the Cardinals. Tennessee kicking off with 10.49 to go in the game. And Pickens has been a real backbreaker tonight. Buchanan. Brought down at the 20. Howard Schnellenberger says the most rewarding thing that has ever happened to him in coaching is that 14 different families have left Miami since he has come to Louisville and moved up here to be with him. And that really is a tribute to uh, not only his, his personality, but his coaching ability and what he's able to do. He's an outstanding coach, Mike. And, uh, very well thought of in the profession. Taken some tough jobs and made them into good jobs. Louisville down by 17. They need to make something happen. Brom under pressure. Sack at the six-yard line. Kevin Mays, 96. James Wilson, 72. Combined for the fifth sack for the Volunteers. They had 30 sacks as a team a year ago. And Schnellenberger has brought more than uh, assistant coaches and staff members with him. He's brought some players. Still has connections in the state of Florida. 10 of the 16 on the two. Brown steps up, has a chance to run. 20, 25, 26 yard line and goes down before Jeremy Lincoln has a shot at him. Game 20. Clock ticking away. 9.52, and Louisville needs three scores. The loss of Daryl Boykin, the tailback, has hurt Louisville. Draw to Dawkins. Trying to pick up the first down. Needed to reach just shy of the 31-yard line. And it looks like they mark it just across the 30, so it'll be a short yardage situation coming up for Louisville. I think they have a problem here. I think they gave him the first down. I don't think Well, they didn't. They were three quarters of a it. yard short. He gave it to him. He yeah. said, move the chains and let's go. And the Tennessee sideline was really screaming at the officials. The marker was out at the 31-yard line. The ball just barely got across the 30. Brom to Dawkins. And Dawkins will take it up to about the 33-yard line. That's a split officiating crew, so sometimes you only have to go nine and a half yards. Depends who's on that side. Well, they did that time. Negates a big play. Offensive line, sometimes when you get tired, here you see the rush. You know, it looked like a pretty good block to me by John Bach. I think the holding was called on him. I thought he did a pretty good job. I didn't see a holding there, but of course you could call that any Probably. play. Offensive lineman say, look, I've held the last 10 times. You didn't call me that time. I didn't, and you call. It. Second down and 24. Now, nothing's fair. Second and 24 for the Cardinals. Uh -huh. Brown has been under a withering rush tonight. And is again sacked for the sixth time. And the third sack of the night for Chuck Smith, the right defensive end. Smith had four and a half sacks last year. He has three tonight. We've got Chuck Smith going against the Sean Rodriguez, number 79, 78. Hope that they kept the tight end in. Jose Gonzalez, and he just beat him. He kept the tight end in for maximum protection. Chuck, missed. Chuck Smith still was able to make the tackle. And Blumeyer missed him badly. 
trying to come over and help out the tight end. player we're told is their uh, starting right tackle Billy Bosworth. He's also the long snapper. So if he is hurt and is not able to make the long snap, they need to have somebody start warming up over here on the sideline. If you joined us late here in Louisville, the storyline of this ball game. Pickens with two huge plays for touchdowns, and Louisville has only turned five turnovers into eight points, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And several of those turnovers came, and they got the ball deep in Tennessee territory. They'll look back on this as a game of really missed opportunities. It really has been. When you get eight points off five turnovers, that's a credit to the Tennessee defense. When you have turnovers, the Tennessee defense, the coaches are asking them to make sure you don't allow them in the sudden change situation, and they've been able to do that. Bosworth limps off, and Sean Rodriguez will come in to take his place. Third and 32. We well, have to air this one out because you also realize your long snapper's down. So in fourth and, and long situation, you, you're going to have to punt. They still don't see anybody warming up down here for the long snap. They do not have a backup snapper listed on their depth chart. Third and 32. Brom goes on the draw to Dawkins. And Dawkins got it out across the 15-yard line, so Louisville will have to punt. Schnellenberger said the program would not suffer if they lost as long as they played well and kept it reasonably close, and I think they have done that tonight, Mike. Wilmsmeyer, sky high. Fair catch signal for. Made at the 42-yard line by Pickens, and I'm sure the Louisville special team is very happy to see him signal fair catch. 7.36 to go in the game. Tennessee in command, 28-11. Tennessee in command, 28-11, 7.36 to go in the ballgame from Louisville, Kentucky. And the Volunteers starting to roll it up statistically with 360 yards in total offense. Five turnovers, the only thing that's really slowed them down. Stewart, the tailback, gets a couple. Stewart, sit down to the sideline, Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, it's not good for Louisville. Offensive tackle Billy Bosworth has a severely sprained right ankle. They will take, but he will not be back in. And defensive end Mel Mills has a slight concussion. He will play no longer tonight. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. That's from uh, slamming his 250-pound body into 300-pound offensive lineman all night. Louisville being worn down, a gallant effort. But physically, they cannot match Tennessee. Stewart hit in the backfield, got away, then tripped again. And the man who hit him twice, Joe Johnson, number 94, the red shirt freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Johnny Majors just wants to keep that clock running. Yep. Loss of four. The clock right now, more of an enemy for Louisville than the scoreboard. They're down 17 points, so they need three scores, and right now they only have six and a half minutes to get them. defensive end got to him. A little surprised by the call that they would even think about putting the ball up in the air, but they did. Coming up tonight, baseball tonight with Gary Miller and then Sports Center. Bob Lee and Dan Patrick, they'll bring you up to date on everything else that's going on in the world of sports. We invite you to stay tuned for that immediately following our telecast. Mike Patrick and Mike Godfrey with you and Tom Hutton. The freshman from Memphis, who apparently has won the punt job, is on the kick. Buchanan is back, but they'll let the ball roll. It's down to 32. 
with five and a half minutes to go. We've got a timeout on the field, and Tennessee continues to lead. The 11th-ranked Volunteers are up by 17. Tennessee leading by 17 with five and a half minutes to go. The airship Shamu is with us tonight, piloting the blimp captains Alan Judd and Tony Stevenson, the cameraman this evening, George Shaftsman. That's what we need. ESPN needs its own airship. Wouldn't that be a nice way to get around? Of course, what is it, 10 miles an hour? We'd have to leave on Monday for a Thursday game. And you'd never get to wherever you are Saturday. Louisville running out of time, down by 17, takes over to zone 34. The seventh sack by that Tennessee defense. They have come after him all night long. And that one will go to number 72, James Wilson out of Hampton, Virginia, and Brom is down. It's tough to practice, as we, we talked about earlier. When you start to scramble, your linemen are lost. You have the receivers have a scramble rule. If he goes to a certain direction, mm -hmm. the receivers are supposed to reroute also. Here you see Jeff Brom. He's just trying to find some time to get somebody open. He saw the tight end, Anthony c -Mack, and he started to deliver it, but then was hit from behind. Ernest Fields was the guy who got there first and put the big hit on him. I don't know if he saw Ernest Fields until it was too late. He had his eyes on James Wilson. Of course, fatigue is also going to be a problem for Brown because he's done a lot of scrambling to them. Well, remember, they played last Saturday. This is a short week. This is a lot to ask. Uh, uh, but when you play a game like that, it's an advantage because you get a game out of your way. But uh, you have to compliment Tennessee. Tennessee has not made many mistakes tonight in their opening game. Eric Watts out of Bixby, Oklahoma, the senior backup, who's a graduate student in the MBA program. Got to get rid of the headset and get one of those hard hats, son. He says, I'm ready, coach. I don't know. As much as all kids want to play, I don't know if you want to come in in this situation. Well, he knows one thing. He's watched the rush all night. Tennessee has been relentless on defense. He's going to get some snaps from the center right here to get used to the exchange. Now he goes out, and now the offense is used to Jeff Brom, so it's going to take a little time to get used to his signal calling. Coming up right after our telecast, Gary Miller, baseball tonight, bringing you up to date on all the pennant race action, and then Bob Lee and Dan Patrick standing by with Sports Center. Brom is up. Seven times he's been sacked tonight for 60 yards and hit many, many times besides that trying to deliver a pass. And obviously favoring his right leg. Dr. Jerry Punch will be down there checking with the medical staff on the Louisville sideline and will fill us in as soon as he can. And certainly hope uh, for Louisville and Jeff Brom that this is just a minor injury and he'll be ready to go next week. Brom 14 out of 25, 133 yards and a touchdown. Had several drops tonight, too. So Eric Watts, senior 6'5", 224, will come on to play quarterback facing his second and 17. Usually in this situation, they go with a draw play, but I don't know if they can afford it. And they do. Dawkins. Gets it out to the 30-yard line. you got to let the guy get his feet wet a little bit. We have a Tony at 444 on the clock. He may be the quarterback in the next game if uh, Jeff Brown is hurt, which we all hope Jeff Brown's going to be back right away. So it'll give Howard Snellberg a chance to look at the, the senior. Brown obviously in discomfort on the sideline. Third and 14. to Dawkins and incomplete. Louisville has a tough schedule. You see it right here. They have 10 days to prepare for Ohio State, which will be another tough game on the road. Then Southern Mississippi, Cincinnati at home, at Boston College, then Army on the road. So Louisville has a tough schedule. Virginia Tech, good football team. Florida State coming in here. 
Uh, at Memphis State, who beat Southern Cal, and you have at Tulsa. So they've got a tough schedule. They've upgraded it every year. And Pickens is licking his chops, waiting for another opportunity. But he'll fail, fair catch this one back at the 29. by Pickens at the 29. But when you talk about tough schedules, all you have to do is look at Tennessee. UCLA is next, then Jackie Sherrill's Mississippi State squad. Look at this games in a row. Auburn, Florida, Alabama, both on the road. Then you would have looked at the schedule at the beginning and say, well, Memphis State, at least we get a little bit of a breather, and then they go out and beat Southern Cal. Then you get to play Notre Dame, and it's rated the 10th toughest schedule in the nation. I said the other day, I would hate to see the other nine. <laughs> Washington is rated as having the hardest schedule in the country. Aaron Hayden on the carry. Johnny Majors has only won 102 games as opposed to 56 losses and eight ties, two straight SEC titles. The NCAA, incidentally, has completed its investigation of the Tennessee football program and has not announced its word as yet. Tennessee officials met with the investigators two weeks ago, and they are all waiting to find out what's going to happen. And Johnny Majors told us uh, he keeps his kids updated all the time on what's going on. Clock ticking away, 322, second and nine. Hayden again, Sumter wraps him up and then gets a lot of help. Doesn't look like it affected the preparation coming into this game. No. Well prepared, well schooled. Uh, sometimes that can be something just takes your mind off of the game and, and concentration, but it doesn't seem to appear that it bothered them. And as a coach of a young team, I know you're holding your breath in that first game. You just want them to get through it and get some of that very valuable game experience. And if you can get out with a win and pick up that experience, so much the better. Third and eight, 2.45 to go. Standing looking tailbacks in this Tennessee program. This is Hayden on the delay. Cuts it outside, going for the first down marker. He has it. Rawl Bino chased him out of bounds, but Tennessee will be able to keep the clock moving with another first down. There's only two and a half left. The draw has been a big play all evening for Tennessee. The drop of the linebackers, they were able to get back, the up the fullback on the linebackers. Good pass protection, showing pass protection. Outstanding job with that play tonight to draw. And Hayden has gone over the 100-yard marks. Another uh, freshman tailback, Stewart, with 64. Campbell, a fullback, with 21. Here's Hayden trying to get it outside. Canoodle have missed it. Crosses midfield down to the Louisville 47-yard line. Brevin Smith made the stop. Let's go to Jerry Punch at the sideline, an update on the quarterback. Guys, I wish I had better news, but I really don't. Jeff Brom being loaded in a golf cart behind me. Dr. Raymond Shea, the orthopedic surgeon here for the Louisville, has examined him, examining the area in the right side of the lower leg, the fibula, the non-weight-bearing bone. Probably what they'll do is take him in the golf cart back to the dressing room. They'll put him in an ambulance, take him over to Audubon Hospital, Humana Hospital at Audubon, about five minutes away, and get an x-ray. They do not have x-ray equipment here, and Dr. Shea is standing by with us as uh, he gives... Uh, let me, let's grab Dr. Shea. Raymond, what's the status on Jeff Brom? Jeff Brom uh, appears to have a fracture of the right uh, lateral malleolus, the, bo the small bone on the outside of the ankle. He went down, and when we went out there, he said, my ankle's broken, my ankle's broken. It's not your typical sprain. He's going in. He's in some pain. We're going to change him into some uh, dry sweats, bring him over to the hospital, get an x-ray. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shea. That's the right lateral malleolus. That's part of the fibula, as I said, the non-weight-bearing bone. A tough break for Jeff Brom. Jerry, let me ask you a question. As a doctor, if that is the ultimate diagnosis, is that a season-ending injury? Possibly not. Depending upon how low the, the injury is, if it's right at the ankle, they may be able to do something as far as rehabbing him in, let's say, five or six weeks. If it's up in the mid-shaft, up toward the knee, and his looked like it was about halfway in between by the examination here on the bench, it could end this season, yes. All right, Jerry, thanks very much. And, of course, uh, a, a terrible turn of luck for the Louisville Cardinals. And when you're facing an upgraded schedule like they are, you can ill afford to lose your starting quarterback. Well, I think Louisville will look to Marty Lowe, who's a freshman, true freshman from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 
and give him some work along with the senior and uh, come up with a quarterback. There is Lowe, the freshman who now all at once jumps to number two on the depth chart instead of number three. We have a timeout on the field, a minute 32 to go. We'll be back in a moment. One minute, 32 seconds to go, and the night gets bleaker for the Louisville Cardinals as they lose their starting quarterback and several other players banged up. And the dominance of the 11th-ranked Volunteers is shown in the second half. They're up 28-11, trying to run out the clock here. And we have a new quarterback, Keith Schuler, in the game for Tennessee. And Schuler wants to throw and throws, skips one in there. Incomplete. Trying to get Schuler some work, the freshman out of Bryson City, North Carolina, 6'3, 202. Very mobile quarterback with an excellent arm. John Hagel's number, 21. Clock stop with a minute 28 to go. Wanting to run the option, kicks it out to Stewart. Stewart nailed as he got inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Of course, people in this state want to see a Louisville-Kentucky football series is going to happen. Well, it should happen. Kentucky has offered Louisville four games at Lexington, none here. I think the program here has arrived. I think the people of Louisville, the Louisville fans, they deserve for Kentucky to come over here. So hopefully they'll work that out. Howard Snellberg is a graduate of the University of Kentucky. He'd love to play him. And the other thing is, Mike, it would be great for the state and high school football for Kentucky and Louisville to play, just like it's been for basketball. I would think so, too. Schuler on the carry runs into his own man, wrapped up at the 30-yard line. 254 yards rushing on the night for Tennessee. Here's the injury to Brom again. This is the play where he was hurt, scrambling and being sacked for the seventh time. Let's see if we can see how it happened. I don't think he ever sees the tackle coming. Uh, it buckled. Looked like the uh, cleats in his right foot caught in the turf. And the ankle just gave. And that's the problem with this stuff. The more games I do, the more I hate artificial turf. Fourth and five, Tennessee will go for it. Stewart, first down, and Moore runs over one man, gets to the 20, to the 15, to the 13. 196 pounds on a 6-1 frame. And that is the end of the ball game. The biggest crowd in the history of Louisville football has seen its team hang in there but lose to 11th ranked Tennessee. Our final score, Tennessee 28, Louisville 11. For Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Louisville. Sports Center is next.